everyone, welcome back to our channel. Today I thought it would be fun to share my story about how I got Willow and then also share some tips that I have to help you find a corgi breeder or a corgi rescue for yourself. <laughs> I was getting a treat out of my pocket. Come over here. I personally get asked all the time on Instagram how to find a good corgi breeder. People always ask me who Willow's breeder is and so I'm going to share as much knowledge as I have. I'm not really an expert in the area, but I just want to give you a couple of tips to look out for when you're trying to find a corgi, but I also encourage you to look up online other articles. The PWCC has a lot of good resources where you can learn about how to find a corgi. There are also a ton of really good blogs of people who have more knowledge in this area than I do, but I just wanted to provide a couple of things that I know. I did a little bit of research and we're gonna go over those things quickly. There's no more. It's all gone. Sorry. The best place to start when looking for a corgi is to go to the PWCCA website. They have a ton of corgi resources basically and they have a breeder search and you can search by state. Um, you can filter by if you're looking for puppies, etc. So I would recommend starting there and seeing if there are any good breeders near you. Another great way to meet breeders that I have learned from people on Instagram is going to dog shows. So if you find a dog show in your area and you head down there, just make sure you have a list of questions, make sure you do your research and be knowledgeable about what you're asking them, get their contact information, get their website, and then you can do a little bit more research from there. Another way that you can find corgis is simply by Googling corgi breeders near me, corgi breeders in Phoenix, which is what I did and then you'll be given a bunch of websites, but then it's on you to do your research and comb through those breeders and make sure they are meeting the standards that I'm going to lay out next. She's gonna keep coming back to my pocket to see. There's no treats in here. They're all gone. You just had a whole bone, okay? Corgis are very food driven as well, if you didn't know. Okay, so the things that you're going to really want to pay attention to when you're looking at a breeder's website or Facebook or speaking to them is you want to make sure that they are doing health testing on all of their dogs that they're breeding. So typically on a breeder's website, it's going to list their males and their females that they breed. You can check into each and every one of them. You should be able to see all of the tests that they have run on each dog that they're breeding and they should be very transparent about the test results. The main things that you're looking for here is that they have healthy test results for their hips and for their eyes. As well as DM, this is very common in corgis and is a devastating disease that will ultimately result in the end of their lives and a lot of that bills. So yeah, you don't want that. The next thing that you're going to want to look for on their website is whether or not they're showing their dogs. When breeders are showing their dogs in things like confirmation, this is basically the typical dog show that you watch on TV. What the judges are looking for is to make sure that these dogs are literally bred perfectly. All right, now I'm just gonna share a quick list of red flags to look for if you're in contact with the breeder and some of these things pop up, then that's probably not a good sign. The first one is having a wait list. When people just take names in a wait list and let's say the wait list is three years long and they make you make a deposit just to be on that wait list, that's a red flag. Breeders should actually be choosing which puppies fit with certain families. They should have an extensive application that you have to fill out in order to be considered to be put on the wait list. And then they should be ensuring that each corgi is going to a home that is going to fit best for it. So if they're just throwing you on a wait list and making you pay $4,000, that's not a good sign. Another red flag is if they don't show the parents and they don't let you meet the parents. What if they just throw up a fake picture on their website of the mom and the dad? It looks great, but then you can't actually go and meet them and check their living conditions and make sure that it's the same dog and make sure the dog is living a happy and healthy life. If they don't want to let you come onto their property and meet their dogs, that's a big red flag. Another thing is advertising all over their website that they're AKC registered. Anyone can get the AKC registration for their dogs. So 
that's not like a good selling point, it's not a good sign, it's not something that should make you feel better that they're AKC registered because it's not really, it doesn't really mean anything. Another red flag is if they say they will ship their puppies, a good breeder is going to ask that you come and pick up the puppy from them. And then just look at the history of their website and their Facebook or any other social media and see how many litters they're producing a year. If they are churning out litter after litter, especially from the same parents, that is not a good sign that your puppies are going to be healthy. From the moment I saw my first corgi, I kind of knew that I had to have one and my obsession began. But I started following a bunch of other corgi accounts on Instagram and I really started learning about the breed and their personality and how to take care of them that way. I kind of had a five year plan where I was going to wait until I bought a house before I got my corgi puppy, but I still started doing research and I found a breeder luckily that was like pretty close to me that had beautiful corgis on their website. I followed their Facebook and I was just kind of keeping an eye out, um, learning a little bit about this particular breeder and just watching for their litters that became available. But I really had no intention of actually getting a corgi right away. Probably a year later, it was a Friday night, I was sitting at home alone. One of my best friends texted me a picture of a corgi puppy and unfortunately and very sadly it was at the mall. It was like so expensive and it just looked very unhealthy. Its eyes were like really goopy and it looked sick and another reason why you should never buy a dog at the mall. They're literally supporting puppy mills. So, um, but that kind of got the ball rolling. I actually looked at the dog and looked at the website to see how expensive it was. And I was like, oh my God, I really want a Corgi now. I don't know, something just went off in my brain and I was like, I need a Corgi. But I was like, no, I'm not going to support a puppy mill or a mall puppy shop. And then I just decided to go check on the breeder's website that I was interested in and they had posted that they had puppies available. They had three female puppies available and that you could submit your application. One thing that Willow's breeder does is she doesn't accept applications for the puppies until there's actually a litter. So once there's a litter, she knows how many, how many puppies there are, kind of their temperament and behavior, then she'll start taking applications for those puppies. And so I sat there on a Friday night and I filled out this application in so much detail. She asked for what my house looked like, my living situation, who lived in my house, and the names of the people, the pets that were also in my house, what my backyard was like, if there was a gator on my pool. So it was very thorough and I filled that, filled that application out like hardcore. <laughs> so I submitted that application and then literally spent the whole weekend refreshing my email to see if she emailed me back. I was like, I needed a corgi right now. <laughs> then Monday had rolled around and I hadn't heard back from her. So I decided to go on her Facebook and message her and ask if she had received my application. She finally got back to me and was super nice. She started asking me um, what, who, what my name was, what my application was. She remembered my application. She said that something along the lines of at least I spelt Corgi correctly because apparently she had gotten a bunch of applications where people don't know how to spell Corgi. So she just completely ignored those. If you don't know how to spell Corgi, then you don't get a Corgi, you know? You have to know enough about the breed to know how to spell it. So she asked me a few questions um, and then said, can I call you tonight around five or 5.30 and talk to you about the puppies? And I was like, yeah, of course. I was so eager to get done with work and I was super nervous because I kind of assumed that this was gonna be an interview for her to make the judgment call whether or not I should get a puppy. And so she called me and she right away just started telling me about the puppies, the food that they're on, background about them and all of this and it just kind of sounded like she was giving me the puppy. So that was really exciting. She told me that there were three females and I was gonna be the last on the list. 
So the other two parents were going to come meet the puppies and then choose the one that they wanted. And I was going to be getting the last one if I wanted it. Oh, and then I was able to pick her up on Thursday. So in three days, it was Monday. And she said that she would be available on Thursday. So thank God for Amazon Prime. But I was, oh my gosh, so excited. And this was all such a quick turnaround. It makes me think that I was super lucky and also me and Willow were just so meant to be because of how random it was that I even checked the website and that Willow was the last pick of the litter. Anyways, I drove out to the breeder's home on Thursday and they live on a big ranch, a big plot of land and you know I was able to see all of the dogs they were all in their kennels and mind you I had not seen that many corgis in person up until that point and to see all of these corgis laying in their kennels was like so crazy to me I just remembered that's just a recovered memory but that was so cool because I didn't have a corgi before that and now I see them all the time but anyways so I walked in as the last couple was leaving and the breeder was holding Willow and she said, this is your puppy. And she handed it to me and I was so excited. And she told me that my puppy was actually her favorite and that if she could have kept one, it would have been her. I picked Willow up at like 7 p.m., which also happened to be her feeding time. The puppies were on a feeding schedule of 7 a.m. and 7 p.m and Willow literally cried the entire time. I was like holding her, trying to comfort her, and she was literally just crying because she wanted to be fed, but the breeder didn't want to feed her because then she would probably end up pooping in my car. So we waited until I got home to feed her, but I had to fill out a bunch of paperwork. I had to pay the rest of my deposit, and the breeder just went over a ton of information with me on taking care of the puppy, um, lifelong stuff, the food she's feeding them, the supplements she gives them, all of that. And I think it's funny that the whining was like a foreshadowing into how much Willow is obsessed with food. But yeah, then I finally got to put her in my car and take her home and that was the best feeling ever. And it was also the scariest feeling ever because I was worried that I was making the wrong decision, especially because it was kind of a quick turnaround, even though I had been preparing it's hard for me to like really commit to things sometimes. And so when I finally just took the plunge and committed to it, I was worried that I was making the wrong decision, but obviously I wasn't. And me and Willow are in it for life. And she was such a good girl. She slept through the night. I woke up like every other hour checking to make sure she was still alive. And you know, the rest is history, I guess. Anyways, I hope you guys really enjoyed Willow's little origin story. Everything just happened in such a meant to be way that I just, it's just one of those coincidental, like crazy moments in my life that literally changed my entire life. I quite literally, my whole life revolves around Willow. I'm doing Willow content and social media full time and it's just, changed my life and made it so amazing and if my friend didn't send me that picture of that corgi that one night then we wouldn't even be here and I wouldn't have adopted this crazy silly dog that howls while she eats and that just I bonded with so completely it's a crazy story. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope the breeder tips were helpful as well. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you have any questions and please like this video, subscribe if you have not subscribed and turn on your post notifications. Follow us on Instagram and TikTok as well. And we will see you guys back with another video. Bye.